welcome back. We've been talking in class about uh, projectile motion with zero launch angle. That is an object moving out horizontally and then being pulled down vertically due to gravity causing a, a parabolic path. Well, we're still going to be talking about parabolic paths, but now we're going to be dealing with general launch angles. That means any angle other than zero. So the angle could be um, you know, 1 degrees, 5 degrees, 10, 80, 89, or even, nine, well, not 90 degrees, but anything between 0 and 90 degrees is a general launch angle. So we have a problem right here with a golfer. And a golfer hits a ball at an angle of 54 degrees right here, and it goes up into the air and comes back down on the other side of a tree. All right, now the tree is 3 meters tall, we're told. That's this right here. The tree is also 14 meters away from the golfer. And when the ball makes its trip all the way up and over the tree, hopefully over the tree, and lands back on the ground at the same level, it lands 17.8 meters away. All right, so that's the setup for the problem right here. What we really want to, to find is, well, what A and B are asking us. A, part A says, um, what was the initial speed, okay, VI? This doesn't mean the initial speed in the X direction or initial speed or velocity in the Y direction. It's simply the initial speed at this angle of 54 degrees right here. Okay, so what we're probably gonna have to do is find the X direction and the Y direction initial velocity and then combine them to get the initial speed. Um, you might call this the magnitude the magnitude of the initial velocity, not the x or the y, okay? And b asks us for what is, um, when the ball passes over the tree, okay, what's the height or what is the, yeah, how high was the ball when it passes over the tree? So really we want to find the final y position at the tree. So I kind of have a subscript of a subscript right here. All right, now these are two different scenarios. We're going to need to use this whole trajectory path to find out the initial velocity. But then we just all we care about for part B is just to the tree, how high it is. Okay, so let's just solve them one at a time. So for part A, we want the initial velocity. Okay, well we don't know anything about the initial velocity, but if we find the x component and the y component of the initial velocity, we can combine them together using the Pythagorean to get the initial velocity. So we can say the initial velocity is initial velocity in the x squared plus the initial velocity in the y direction squared. Square root of that will give us our initial velocity coming off the t at that 54 degree angle. Okay? So let's solve for our x and our y components here. Now I'm going to switch to green here. Hopefully this is a good green. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's write down everything we know about our x. Now this is for the whole trip right here, going up and coming all the way back down. So the whole displacement in the x direction is 17.8 meters. All right, what else do we know? We know the acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second. Think about it, nothing is making this ball go any faster or slower in the x direction. We know there's an acceleration in the y direction, but not in the x, so we can make that zero. We're told, um, oh, I didn't write this down before, sorry. We're told that the time is 2.24 seconds, okay, for it to come back down to the ground. And we want to know the initial velocity in the x direction, which we don't know. Okay, but we should be able to rearrange this. So after all, we have an equation that looks like this. Displacement is initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. Okay, well right away we can say, great, that goes away because the acceleration is zero. And when we can go back to solving for simply the initial velocity in the x direction. So take this initial velocity in the x, um, divide both sides by t. So initial velocity in the x direction is going to be our displacement divided by time. That's, uh, in this case, 17.8 meters divided by 2.24 seconds, which means that our initial velocity in the x direction is going to be 7.95 meters per second. 
All right, now let's put a dotted line box around that. That's not our final answer. It's only the x direction, but we're part way there because we're solving for the, the magnitude of the initial velocity. All right, well, let's, uh, let's do our y components then. Our y components. I usually write my y's in blue. Not very different from that green, but I'm not going to change it now. Um, what's the total displacement in the y direction? Now think about it for a second. If it starts here, goes up and comes back down, then for this whole amount of time, the total displacement in the y direction is zero meters, right? It displaces right back to the, uh, the same level that it was before. Uh, how about the acceleration in the y direction? We know that. That's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of gravity. Uh, and we do know that the same, th the one thing that's the same between the x and the y directions is time. The change in time is 2.24 seconds and we want to find the initial velocity in the y direction. Alright, now we've got a bunch of things we can work with here. Let's use the same equation, initial velocity, I'm sorry, displacement in the y direction, is initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half times acceleration in the y direction times time squared. All right. Um, well, this on the uh, on the left hand side, the change in y, this becomes zero, right? But we can't really drop it out because it's it's still a placeholder there. So, um, but that becomes zero, or we can just plug in zero for that. Um, but let's go about solving for initial velocity in the y direction. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this whole thing from the right hand side and bring it over to the left and then divide all that by time so we get initial velocity in the y direction by itself. It should look like this. Zero, which is that right there, minus one half times acceleration in the y direction times time squared divided by, bring this time down, divided by t is going to be our initial velocity in the y direction. See what we did here? We just, we just solved for initial velocity in the y. Okay, so initial velocity in the y is going to be really uh, negative, yeah, negative one half times our acceleration which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared times our time squared um, 2.24 seconds squared right divided by 2.24 seconds and uh, I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit I'm going to move this over right there give us a little more space oh no shift this over so um what do we get? Our initial velocity in the y direction, I get that to be 11 meters per second. Okay, that's good. That's helpful because we now have our x direction. Uh, I'll write up my y first since I'm still in blue. So that's initial velocity in the y, right? And we have our x direction, which is this green right here. So initial velocity in the x, so we can use those to combine together to solve for the, um, the initial velocity right here coming off the t at 54 de uh, degrees. Okay, So initial velocity is simply nothing more than the square root of our x direction squared plus our y direction squared. That's 7.95 squared plus 11 squared. And so our initial initial velocity, this is our final answer for part A. I get that to be 13.5 meters per second. What's the angle? Well, the angle is easy. That's 54 degrees. Um, so you could write that if you want at 54 degrees north of east. But really, this right here is our velocity coming off the T. We found that by getting the X component and the Y component and combining them simply using the Pythagorean. For part B, we want to know how high is the ball when it's right above the tree. Now I'm going to make the ball a different color. I'm going to make it like an, like an orange or something. Okay, the ball's right here above the tree. And we want to find the Y final, you might say, at the tree. 
that is the Y final of the ball when it's at the tree right there. So, um, so again, do we know how long it takes the ball to get up there to the tree in the Y direction? Um, not really, but we know and or we can find out how long it takes the ball to reach the tree in the X direction. Because the X in the X direction is just simply moving at a constant rate of speed. Uh, here's what I mean. If we, uh, if I can get my tools right here, um, for the x direction, we can say the initial initial velocity in the x direction is 7.95 meters per second. Uh, we know that the displacement in the x direction, that is to the tree, is 14 meters. So we can find the time to the tree in the x direction. Once we do that, we know that the time is the only thing that's the same in the x direction as in the y direction. So we can apply that to the y direction and find out what the y um, location is above the tree right there. Let's just keep going and hopefully it'll make more sense if it doesn't already. Um, so this is what we want to find out. So there's no acceleration in the x direction, so that makes it easier for us. Um, so we could say our time in the x direction to the tree is going to be our displacement divided by our velocity. Alright, so that's, um, what is it, 14.0 meters divided by our velocity, 7.95 meters. That gives us how long to the tree? 1.84 seconds. Let's put a dotted line around that. Okay, so for the ball to move from here to here to where the tree is, that's 1.84 seconds. It also means that it's 1.84 seconds for the ball to move from the T Oh, come on here. Uh, from the T up, 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 and then down a little bit to this position right here. It's moving up in the Y, coming to a stop, and then coming, coming back down. So we can apply this time to the Y direction. So for the Y direction, which is really what we're trying to solve for, for the ball at the tree, um, delta Y of the tree, that's what we want to find, what we're solving for. Okay, we know, like we just solved, that the time to the tree is 1.84 seconds. Okay, what else is happening in the y direction? Well, we know the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And uh, do we need anything else? I don't think so. Um, oh, initial velocity, yes. Initial velocity in the y direction. We can write that because we solved that from earlier. That's 11.0 meters Per second, and I know I'm going to have to shift this over a little bit. Let me just move this, give us a little bit more space here. Okay, so let's solve for our initial velocity. I'm sorry, let's solve for our displacement at the y direction. That is when it's at the tree. All right, and hopefully, if we're the golfer, it's going to be higher than the tree. Otherwise, it'll it'll hit the tree. So initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one-half times acceleration in the y direction times time squared. That's our equation we've used a lot. All right, so that's our initial velocity in the y direction, 11.0. For the sake of space, I'm going to keep units out, times 1.84 seconds times, man, I'm still running out of space. Darn it. Tell you what, I'm going to just... Hey, I'm feeling for you guys. Uh, if you're in class and you're running out of space on these problems, I'm right there with you. Um, all right, so uh, let's move this over here a little bit so we have a little more space to finish this problem out. Yes, supply. All right, sorry about that. And. Um, times uh, for oops I don't want to parentheses quite just yet I want a plus sign right plus 
1 half times negative 9.81 times 1.84 squared. Man, just barely fit that in. All right. So 11.0 meters per second times 1.84 seconds plus 1 half times negative 9.81 meters per second squared times 1.84 seconds squared. It's really just plug and chug at this point. And this solves for our displacement in the y direction at the tree. That's what B is asking. How high is it at the tree? Assuming the ground level is zero, the displacement will tell us the height. And that should give us a height of 3.65 meters. So the golfer says, hooray, it's above the tree. I, don't, I didn't hit it. So it cleared the tree by 0.65 meters since the, the tree is 3 meters tall. So that's it. That's a, a good example of general launch angle problems for projectile motion. If you, don't, if you want to know where something is in the y direction but you have a lot of information for the x direction, that's okay because time is kind of the link between the x and the y direction. So I uh, hope that, that helps and if you have any questions, come see me in class. Thanks for watching.